Hello everyone, my name is Katie and you're watching my channel Super Console where today I have finally dragged myself away for long enough from my Nintendo Switch to bring you my review of Splatoon 2 for the Nintendo Switch. Now I know it's a little bit late and I am sorry for that but I am a true believer in making sure that if it's an online game I've played the game and tested out its servers for long enough after launch to actually get a good idea of how it's running, how everything's working, how popular things are, how long it takes to load in matches because you don't really get that impression when you do a review or you kind of play a game like at launch or pre-launch is, is totally different and hopefully this isn't super too super late for you guys and you know you find it handy still so without any further ado let's get on with it. Splatoon was one of the Wii U's biggest surprises and killer new IPs, essentially a third person family friendly team based shooter enhanced by gyro control and oozing style and fun with the core difference from your conventional shooter game being that you're a kid who is also a squid living in a post apocalyptic water world whose true love in life is hardcore paintballing, fashion and the squiddiest of pop music. Gloriously ridiculous lore aside, Splatoon focused on good old fashioned fun with covering the map in ink taking precedence over shooting down your enemies, but due to its initial release on the Nintendo short-lived Wii U console, Splatoon wasn't necessarily able to get into the hands of the masses. But how has its sequel fared on the Nintendo Switch and what's really changed? Let's find out. If you played Splatoon on Wii U, you'll know what you're in for, as the core online gameplay is largely the same with a casual friendly mode, ranked unlocked after level 10, a league system and offline single player. The game's main mode, Turf War, makes a grand return, albeit with some new maps, as you team up with three other Inklings to cover up as much of the map in your own ink as possible, taking down opposing Inklings to give your side the upper hand. As per the original game, you can swim as a squid in your own ink, but enemies' ink also harms you. So what's really changed here? Well, there's a new weapon type, the Duelies, which work kind of like ink pistols. At the moment, I'm particularly loving the Empery Splat Duelies, which come with a curling ink bomb and my new favourite spectral, the Ink Jet, which allows you to hover using a jetpack which sprays ink below you while shooting ink cannons as you fly on by. It's pretty cool and I think it works really well during a final rampage before the timer runs out. Otherwise, your usual array of weaponry is back, albeit with new bombs or special combos, and a slight rebalance, including the splat rollers, chargers, paintbrushes, buckets, and the trusty splatter shots. Incopolis seems to be a bit more thriving in the new game, with a tweaked layout but the same key shops to search for new power boosting threads in, as well as Sheldon making a return as the geeky weapon salesman. However, there has been a switch up in the Incopolis news studio. If you rewind back to the final Splatfest on Wii U, a showdown of Marie vs Callie, Marie was voted our best girl, which has in turn influenced the events of Splatoon 2, where Callie has mysteriously disappeared and Marie is heavily involved in the single player story mode trying to track her down, which means the TV spot for the Squid has been replaced with two new hosts, Off the Hooks Pearl and Marina. I'm already suspicious of Pearl because she didn't seem to give two shakes of a stick about Callie being missing, and then while I love Marina's character and style, she always seems a bit like she's forcing a smile and secretly hiding some deep dark secret behind her showbiz persona. And although I do love seeing this duo and their cutting quips at each other every day, it does frustrate me how if you play Splatoon more than once a day, you have to sit through the same news update every time. However, in the back left corner comes a new addition to the overworld, the Grizzco Corporation Salmon Run, an online co-op horde mode which sees you dropped off on a hub of floating platforms surrounded by an ocean of toxic waste. You're given a set list of weapons assigned on rotation to take down waves of fishy mutated enemies, harvesting a variety of boss monsters, golden eggs in a basket for the Grizzco Corporation in order to move on to the next wave. It's all about teamwork with this one, coordinating attacks with your inkling bunnies and saving them when they're attacked by an enemy or drowned in toxic waste. The whole premise of this job system is super sketchy, but how cute are those orange little waders that the inklings wear? I wish my inkling could wear them all the time, just in general turf mode. And oh my god, how stressful is the Salmon Run music? Literally, it gets my heart racing every time I hear it. It's a shame really that Nintendo decided to make Salmon Mode only available at certain times as it's a fun breakaway from the equally frantic fan favourite Turf War and a nice addition to the sequel. Single player or hero mode now has a lot more variety both in terms of maps and enemies, and finding each level in a cleverly designed overworld is a puzzle in itself. 
While Marie takes charge of the campaign proceedings, the goal to complete each level is still the same, save the zapfish from the Octarians who are harvesting their energy to power the underground base, while discovering the 28 sunken hidden scrolls. Levels are well designed and short enough to blast through one or two on your way to work or school commute. Each stage focuses on a specific game mechanic, from jumping at walls, grinding on rails, using bombs, exploding balloonfish and more. Boss battles are fun, although not too challenging, utilising the skills you've demonstrated in the few previous stages, with quirky enemies like the Octo Oven and the Octo Samurai to splat and destroy. But it's back in the game's main online multiplayer matchmaking system where the lack of changes to the tried and tested Splatoon formula really start to show their inky tentacles. It just doesn't feel up to scratch with the lobby and matchmaking systems that we've come to expect in this grand old year of 2017. For starters, you can't queue up with friends and make sure you're on the same team, and as the game doesn't reserve a slot in the queue, it can be potluck whether you actually manage to jump in your friends' player lineup before it fills up with strangers, at which point you're forced to sit on a holding screen with no exit until the match finishes. You also can't back out of the lobby once you've started searching for a new game, neither can you swap out your loadout while you wait, or check what your teammates are equipped with. There's also still no in-game TeamSpeak function, although you can download a rather convoluted app to chat with your friends if you so desire. Frequently, I had issues with respawning and not being able to move from the small point in the crucial closing 10-20 to 20 seconds of a battle, losing me and my team precious coverage time, and I personally miss having the Wii U's gamepad as the game's dedicated map, with its current position mapped to the X button feeling really inconvenient in comparison to the first game. And finally, Splatoon 2 insists on only sticking to two maps in rotation per game mode, which, although does allow you to learn the ins and outs of every run, does make for a bit of monotonous gameplay after a few hours before the maps change. Thankfully, Splatfests are making a return, and as of the time of writing, I'm currently arguing over the real important issue here, which is mayo versus ketchup. And if any of you lot are team ketchup, then you are just wrong. Despite all of its shortfalls, I can't help but love Splatoon 2's addictive short bursts of competitive and energetic gameplay, warm and colour-popping aesthetic, and the way it continues to surprise and delight me with small references to key characters in the hero mode lore and a fabulous sense of style. Although it may be essentially the same game with a new lick of paint in the graphics department, if you didn't get a chance to experience Splatoon on the Wii U, now is very much the time to dive in headfirst. It's also important to remember that as per ARMS and the first Splatoon, Nintendo will be slowly rolling out new content, including maps, weapons and new game updates to shake things up a bit. If you loved the first game but wanted a completely fresh new makeover in Splatoon 2, you may be left feeling a little bit underwhelmed with the sequel. But if you can appreciate it for its wacky nintendo fied shooter that it is, there's a lot to love here, even if the online matchmaking system is messy at best. Are you playing Splatoon 2 or are you looking forward to picking it up? What's your thoughts on the game so far? Type some words down in those comments below and make sure to leave a like if you found this video handy. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more Japanese gaming and anime goodness and otherwise, I'll see you on the next one. Stay fresh!